What's going on, guys? Brendan Schaefer here, St. Louis Cardinals writer for KMOV. I wanted to get on here real quick. This is not be shaved daily for the night, so there will be a longer podcast on this Cardinals game from Sunday coming up. But I wanted to get on real quick and talk about how the Cardinal offense really owes Sonny Gray an apology for not getting anything done today when he pitched the way that he did. Sonny Gray, the hard luck loser, giving up any earned runs for the first time in his season. He had gone 11 innings of scoreless baseball for the Cardinals before today, and then he goes six scoreless innings, pitches into the seventh, still probably a bit of a pitch count, although the Cardinals extended him into the 90s today. Had the one base hit that he gave up that allowed two runs to score there in the seventh, so he finishes with only six and a third innings and two runs allowed. 12 strikeouts, though, for Sonny Gray. Just one walk, five hits allowed. 12 Ks. He was absolutely dusting Milwaukee Brewers batters today. And the Cardinal offense said, yeah, we're good. We don't need to help you out in any way, shape, or form in this contest. 0 for 9 with runners in scoring position for the Cardinal offense today. And they take a loss to the Brewers. Reminds me, I have to do my my, my quintessential tweet. Sweeps aren't that hard. Just play the blank. And now it's the Cardinals that are going to fill that hole for the first time in 2024. They lose three in a row to the Milwaukee Brewers. Division rivals, a team that I think a lot of people counted out to begin the year. Well, you probably shouldn't have counted out the Brewers. They're looking a whole lot better than the Cardinals are right now. But with the way in particular that Sonny Gray was pitching this afternoon at Bush Stadium, using that curveball to absolutely dust Brewers hitters and mowing them down for the first six innings in particular, and for the Cardinals to not be able to do anything with the chances that they got against Colin Ray, who pitched well in his own right. But this is just more of the same from the St. Louis Cardinals. Six hits, four walks. So it's not that they had infinite opportunities in this game. They didn't have anybody with a multi-hit game. Donovan Contreras, Newt Barr, Goldschmidt, Wynn, and Michael Ciani all with a base hit. And they had Arenado get on a couple of times with a walk. Goldie drew a walk as well. So on base twice, that's at least a step in the right direction for him. The OPS is back above 500. Uh, Michael Ciani also drew a walk, stole a base in this game as well. Uh, he's playing well. I like what we're seeing from Michael Ciani. But for the Cardinals to not be able to give their ace anything to work with today and the fact that he can go six and a third and only give up two runs and be the, the loser in this game is kind of despicable. The Cardinal offense owes Sonny Gray an apology. And... Uh, you know, maybe Cardinals fans an apology. We can have that conversation too if you want later on tonight. But for him to, to do what he did today, he was absolutely dealing and the Cardinals can't do anything with it. Sonny Gray is the ace that was promised to St. Louis Cardinals fans and to the St. Louis Cardinals rotation. Six and a third, two runs. So he's got a 1.04 ERA now on the season. He's been fantastic. He takes command. He's in charge of what he does out there. It doesn't really matter who the opponent has been. You can look at the second game and say, oh, well, it's the Athletics, no big deal. The Brewers, I, they may not have a world-class lineup, but they're a pretty good team with a good record right now, and he made them look silly for a long time in this one. And I think even in the seventh inning, when he gave up the runs that he allowed, it was just one of those things. It was a couple of hits that were, were combined together, and the timing of it wasn't, wasn't suitable to the Cardinals. But you know what? They'd still be playing if it weren't for... Sonny Gray giving up a couple of runs there because I don't know that the Cardinals here even at 7.30 at night would have would have scored yet with the way the offense was performing today. And it, like I said, it's not like they got a ton of opportunities, but six hits and four four walks, that's still eight, uh, what, 10 base runners. I was looking at the eight in their strikeout department. That's 10 base runners, and to leave all 10 of them on base, and to, it's not like you lost anybody to a double play. You just loaded the bases up, not loaded, but you put guys on base and then – repeatedly just did not think about it 0 for 9 with runners in scoring position and the Cardinals have got to be have got to be one of the worst teams in in Major League Baseball right now in terms of batting average with runners in scoring position I'm going to go ahead and look it up as it pertains to both OPS and batting average because there is a little bit of a difference OPS is typically what I'd like to look at because it gives a nice measurement. It adds slugging percentage to on-base percentage. There are better statistics in terms of predictive metrics and things that <clears throat> they can tell you more about what's going on. But sometimes when you just want a simple stat that can encompass uh, uh, some different things and give you some value, I'm fond of being able to look at OPS for that. And that's what I like to do. 
But when it comes to with runners in scoring position, I think it is a little bit of a different situation because when you've got guys in scoring position, all you really need to do is get a hit. So batting average is a very valuable tool to be looked at in those instances. The Cardinals are 28th in Major League Baseball in batting average with runners in scoring position. They're hitting 201 on the season. The only teams worse are the White Sox, and we know that they're kind of a dumpster fire, and the Minnesota Twins are the only teams in Major League Baseball worse than a 201 batting average with runners in scoring position. That's as of right now as I'm doing this at 7.30 p.m. OPS, is, the Cardinals are 26th, so I guess they've had maybe a couple extra base hits. Maybe they're taking some walks in those scenarios. We remember the walk uh, that happened on Friday night to extend the game with the bases loaded. So the OPS a little bit higher, but man, is that brutal. You're talking about a bottom three, bottom five offense in clutch situations. I want to look at another statistic here because MLB.com lets you look at scoring position with two outs. I'd be curious if it's any different. I don't know that it would be particularly different. The Cardinals are hitting 163 with runners in scoring position in two outs. 26th in baseball in that category. They owe Sonny Gray an apology, man. Sonny was able to win the first two games that he won, despite the offense really not doing their job to a very high degree. I believe the Cardinals scored three runs in both of the the, the two games that Sonny won to begin the season, and then today they don't score any for him. And I thought Sonny was going to continue the scoreless streak until he just ran into a little bit of trouble in the seventh. There was a spot where it was first and third. All he came out just like he did in the last game, or it was in his first game, the one at Bush Stadium when Ollie came out and was talking to Sonny Gray because he was in a situation where he was coming up on his pitch count and they had a runner on first base, they said, hey, the double play ball is what we're going to do here. That's what Sonny described to us after that game. Let's get a double play. Let's get out of this. And he was able to do exactly that on just a few pitches. And the Brewers kind of put the kibosh on that. I think this was a smart play by Milwaukee, knowing that Sonny was probably coming up on an arbitrary pitch count where they didn't want to extend him beyond the batter and you had first and third, the runner from first took off and stole second, which takes the double play out of the equation. So even if in that spot Sonny is able to get it out, it would have still been his last batter, and you would have had somebody not Sonny Gray that you would have tried to score those runs against. Instead, it's just a base hit to left. Those those happen. You're going to give up some contact at times. It wasn't anything too powerful, but it was the exact right hit that the Brewers needed in that moment. And it was the only run producing play of the entire game as a couple of runs scored for Milwaukee and the Cardinals lose in this game to nothing. I just, I see a lot of people say, well, this kind of feels like last year's team. And there might be some differences behind those walls in that Cardinal clubhouse between this year's team and last year's team. You know, we talked about some of the the issues that involved Wilson Contreras last year, and I just don't think everybody in that clubhouse was on the same page. I think that situation is probably a lot better. For anybody who, you know, values the dynamic of of what's going on behind those walls, I I would say that that's probably a non-issue anymore compared to just some of the weirdness that was going down, especially at the beginning of last year. And then as the season goes along, I don't think feelings were necessarily high in the clubhouse in general because by then they were losing a bunch and a bunch of games. Now it feels like they're teetering toward that result as well. I, they're, they're losing baseball right now. It's losing baseball. They lose the, what was it, the last game in Oakland, and now they've lost three in a row as they return to Bush Stadium. And this was a series that they needed to get two of three. This was a series that the Cardinals needed to win and to not even come away with a game when you get a, a couple of really good starting pitching performances Saturday was a wash with Miles Michaelis. We know that. But to not even win one of the games where you get really good starting pitching is, like, it's fine. You can you can talk about it being early, and you can talk about how there's still time, and I'm sure those are things that, that the Cardinals would be doing and that Ollie Marmel, you know, I didn't really hear a lot of that from him. I did look at uh, Valley Sports Midwest Twitter feed, Twitter feed to get a sense of what the vibes were after the game and the post game. I did not actually cover the game. I was there uh, with my family, with my wife and my son as a spectator, which was a lot of fun outside of the not very much action going on in the game, but had a good time with that. We finally just got uh, got him to bed for the night, and so that's why I hopped on at the time that I did to do this video. But I checked out the Bally Sports feed uh, on, on their Twitter account, and there's frustration. The word frustrating is probably the most utilized word by the Cardinal manager in most of the post games recently because things aren't going well and 
the record is going to start to be a factor here. It's it's early in so much as if they ran off an eight-game winning streak, everybody would be feeling lovely about the season. But it's not necessarily early in the way of deciding what the team is. In a lot of ways, you can say, well, they're a team that's kind of doing what they were designed to do on the pitching side of things. Defense has been really solid, but are they feel like an inconsistent hitting bunch. And the snipe back from Cardinals fans will be, oh, no, they're consistent, just consistently bad. I don't think anybody coming into the season, even if you were one of the biggest Cardinal haters, would have expected Paul Goldschmidt to be sitting at a 500 OPS and for Jordan Walker to be, you know, guy that they don't want to really start every day because he's not hitting in a 530 OPS or whatever it is for him. Like, I don't think that uh, these would have been thoughts of even the biggest Cardinal pessimist coming into the season. Everybody was generally, as I recall it, generally on board with this offense being, people were okay with it being the, the group that they had from last year. And that group underperformed, but you could see reasons for it to, to turn around. And I do think there will be Cardinals fans, and let me know in the comments if this is you, that would say, no, I really thought the Cardinals needed to add offensively at position A, B, C, or D, or whatever you thought it needed to have been. Um, and that's fine. That's fair if you felt that way. I did sort of think the Cardinal offense, as it was constructed, would be able to get the job done. So I'm not putting a ton of heat on John Moselak for not having come up with that. Other than to say, based on the way that they did approach the pitching, knowing that some of the guys in that rotation were going to pitch to contact and were going to give up three or four or five runs per game at times, and the idea would just be to get those guys through six or seven innings so that you can save your bullpen, and that's their viable strategy. That only works if the offense is not just good, but really, really good. And and right now, the offense is really, really bad. And it's flat out not performing in clutch situations. It doesn't hit for power at a very consistent rate. Lars Newbar got absolutely screwed today. We can We can acknowledge that. He hit one over the fence, and the center fielder from Milwaukee did a great job and brought it back. But the numbers are the numbers. The Cardinals rank 29th in MLB in home runs. They've hit 13. Chicago White Sox have hit 11. Nobody has fewer home runs to their credit than the Cardinals and the White Sox this season. They're down at the bottom of the league in power production. Just generally, I'll look at OPS. Overall, we had given the numbers for runners in scoring position. But overall, the Cardinals are 26th in Major League Baseball in OPS. They are a bona fide bottom 10 offense right now. The way they come to that is from having guys that you don't expect to be bad hitters performing as bad hitters. And I know everybody was just up in arms. Change the lineup. You need to move Goldie down. I feel like fans just kind of lock into something that they want to blame Ali Marmel for. And once once they get their way, we don't end up talking about it anymore. But let's talk about it. Ali Marmel said, fine, I'll move Goldie down to number five. They didn't score a run today. They didn't score. So I don't think You can look at the manager and you can look at the lineup construction and say, that's it. It's exactly as I said earlier this weekend on B-Shape Daily when talking about that exact conversation that the media had with Ollie Marmel before the game on Saturday. Sure, you can move around the lineup, but let's bottom line this. If the Goldschmidts and the Gormans, and really you can just say, if this lineup in general is not hitting, it's not going to happen for this Cardinals team. And right now, they're not hitting. Is there technically time in the calendar for them to start hitting? Of course, it's still April. But with the at-bats you're seeing, are you buying the Cardinals' explanation that they like internally the work that's being put in and the approach that's being taken? Because at a certain point, we are going to be doing last year over again. I think there are obvious differences, but those don't actually tangibly matter if the record is the same. That's really what it's going to boil down to. If this team is another 90 loss or 85 loss even baseball team, the, the reasons and the behind the scenes of it all are not going to be important to fans and they shouldn't be. They, you know, if, if the players are kumbaya or they're not, doesn't actually have a tangible difference uh, for, for the way the fans feel about it. They're going to ask, how many games did you win? Now, I do think there was an element of the Cardinals going into this offseason saying, we, could, we need a little kumbaya. We need to have good vibes and we need to have good veteran leadership in this clubhouse in order to achieve the goal of winning as many games as we want to win. That was part of their strategy, and I don't think it was a small part, especially with the the particulars of the pitchers that they brought in. And I think that was a noble goal, and I think it was valid, but it's not everything. They, they're they going to have to win games in order for that to count for something. And right now, the reason they're not winning games, largely, I understand Saturday happened, but largely 
it's because of their inability to hit, to hit for power, and to hit in clutch situations as a team. That's what it is right now. And is there a secret fix for that? Because, again, you can rearrange the lineup all you want, but it's deck, tear, jack, ugh, deck chairs on the Titanic. I got going a little fast there. If, if that's what you're talking about, it's just rearranging the deck chairs on a sinking ship. Unless the guys who are expected to do the job just begin to do their job. And that very well may happen. It's just very noticeable right now because so many of them aren't doing it at the same time, which then points fingers at hitting coach and different things like that. I have long been a proponent of kind of ignoring the hitting coach's role. I know a lot of people don't feel that way because, again, I feel like you're looking for something to cling to and to try and change. It, there's not a lot that can be changed when it comes to guys just are not hitting. Yes, a hitting philosophy as a team is an important thing, but at the end of it all, those guys have to go up into the batter's box, mano a mano, 1v1 with the pitcher, and they've got to be better than that pitcher. And the Cardinals haven't done it enough times so far this season. And where it's really frustrating is it's like, oh, okay, all, all teams probably go through this and have their struggles. It's not really the case. The Cardinals are toward the bottom. Like, the numbers bear it out. So it's not just, oh, hitting is hard. Yeah, hitting is hard for 29 other teams, too. The Cardinals are in a spot right now where they're doing it less capably than most of those teams. And for a team that was designed with the offense, again, if you're just writing down on paper a list of attributes of this team, your offense needed to be at the top of the list of the things that would carry you. And right now it hasn't been the case. Like I said, this isn't B-Shape Daily. This is just let's rant about the Cardinals. I think the offense needs to apologize to Sonny Gray for tacking him with an L today for the first time. It should be 3-0, and Sonny Gray, and it didn't end up going that way because of the, all the number of opportunities you had, they couldn't come through. Now, I get it. If the center fielder Perkins doesn't steal a home run from Lars Neupar, the Cardinals are leading 3 nothing to begin this game. But those things happen, and the Cardinals did not find a very good way to bounce back and to recover from it today. There were opportunities to do so. They didn't have a bunch of guys on base, but to get 10 guys on through nine innings, that was enough. It was enough to have made a difference and they just couldn't find any way to score them. They could not find any way to push somebody across the plate. So let me know in the comments, what do you want me to focus on later tonight when I go in on B-Shape Daily? What are you noticing about this Cardinals team? What is at the top of your list of things that, that you think need to be said and need to be discussed as it pertains to this team, which just lost in a sweep to the division rival Milwaukee Brewers? That's going to do it for this video. Make sure you hit subscribe in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. And in so doing, you will make sure to know when B-Shape Daily and the other podcasts post as we have posted a Cardinals video every single day since the beginning of the regular season. I'm pretty sure that's true. You can quote me on that. You can check me on that. But nevertheless, a lot of Cardinals content to come. So thank you guys for joining. We'll talk to you next time on the channel. Peace.